Yeah, so a lot of hacking, so people are tired, but I hope I will make it uh, quick and uh, loud enough so that you will hear me before, before sleeping. Okay, so I was really excited to work on Service Worker because it's a big part of progressive web apps. Um, and I, I really like to be thought as progressive myself, except on Sunday night where I'm actually eating popcorns. But um, I think it's, this is kind of progressing, it's slowly working. Uh, and I, I saw some of them uh, last summer, so I thought it's really cool. So it's my feeling of being progressive, uh, quietly, steadily making progress. So let's hope the web is going this way. Um, so service workers. Um, service workers is, is, um, is probably you all know what these service workers are, but I, I need to introduce two things. So service worker is this kind of uh, thing where you have a web page, uh, it's your house, and you, have, you want to receive mail, you want to have mail. So this guy is actually uh, the service worker that actually is taking parcels, uh, giving them to you, sending them back, and he has all these things. And some of these things are actually stored locally. So this is where the cache API is actually triggering. So for service workers, we actually focused in WebKit on uh, offline mode uh, or uh, slow networks. So that's why we focused on cache API service worker fetch events. So yeah, that's less nice than the first picture, but still it's useful for people uh, not used to uh, uh, WebKit. So in WebKit, we are uh, using a multi-process architecture. There's the main process, the UI process. Uh, it's green because it's trusted. There are these web processes where there are plenty of uh, JavaScript stuff happening, and there's the network process. Cache API is just a map uh, of request responses, and it's synchronized. So if this web process is uh, writing in the map, then this web process should also be able to actually read what's happening. And it should be it should be all synchronized be between all of it. So obviously, there's a need to have some process that will actually handle uh, this map. So what we, what we are doing is basically, every time we are reading, writing to the cache API, we're going from the web process to the network process through IPC, and the network process is actually handling the, the, the map. The map uh, tries to um, keep in memory uh, as much as possible, but it's also backed uh, by the file system, uh, obviously. Um, so the file system only happens, of course, if you're uh, in non-private browsing mode. If you're in private browsing mode, then it will be only memory-based. Service work, oh, yeah, so this is simple. This is starting to get a bit more complex, but still, it's it's quite fine. So you see that there's a new process, storage process, and there are some new service worker process there. So the service worker process is basically a web process whose sole purpose is to run in the background sub uh, regular workers with JavaScript. Regular workers with uh, specific APIs to actually um, be called whenever web process actually is making a load. So when you load a web page, the first thing that the web process will do will will be to say, hey, I need to load this web page, so it's on this origin, is there a service worker for me? So the web process is actually going to the storage process to get that information. When the storage process says, oh yeah, there's a service worker, here is the service worker handle. Then the web process is saying, cool, I will actually go to my service worker process. So then it's getting back to the storage process saying, hey, I need to send you this fetch event. So please talk with service worker process so that there will be a service worker instance with whom I can actually work with. So it goes this, this way, service worker process is doing something, then getting this way, and hopefully service worker process will already have a parcel for you. That's great. Then no network process, no networking, it's working great. If the service worker process has not done so, has nothing for you, then you actually go to the network process. So it's, it's clearly a trade-off, because doing this ping-ponging and finally getting, getting to the network process is slowing down the application. That's one of the concerns we, we have, but uh, it's the way the stack is written, and it, it's working pretty well. 
Um, so we'll see later whether we can improve this. So, since in, we are in WebKit, we have this, co this concept of um, cache partitioning, which means that, let's say you have two web pages, a.com, b.com, and a.com and b.com have an iframe which is in c.com origin. You might think, oh, this c.com has a service worker, this one as well, there's the same, same service worker registration, same service worker script, so we should actually have just one service worker instance. Um, it's working like that in Chrome, probably Firefox as well. But since we are trying to segregate as much as possible, and in the network process, these two iframes would behave differently in terms of caching, we are also creating different service worker instances for this one and this one. So it, it, it's a difference. So if you load some resources if, from your service worker, they will be loaded twice there and there, probably. But it's a uh, security and privacy uh, improvement. And even though it's uh, an efficiency regression somehow, we, we think it's, uh, it's, it's good for web and for consistency within WebKit to do that. So we did that. We tried to do that. And it was, uh, so what we did was first we read the spec. It was, it's a great spec. We thought we understood it. We implemented it. And we failed miserably uh, with the test. So we went back to the spec and we read it again. And progressively we improved our understanding of the spec and our bugs in the implementation. Uh, so because all these tests, like most of these tests, were there before we actually started uh, implementing web, uh, service worker in WebKit. It was uh, a huge gain of time because understanding a test is much easier than understanding the spec. Uh, so where we are now, uh, I just learned about this W uh, for your information showing latest Safari uh, tech preview results. It's, it's great. We are like pretty good. Uh, there's still some um, API missing, but in, in terms of um, interop of future implementation, it's already, already quite good. So here we go, Galicia. It's uh, marvelous. We can uh, spend a lot of time relaxing and everything. Uh, except it's the access, right? So in the access, you need to have uh, goals. And here is one goal. Um, this is STP, uh, which is so our implementation is covering Mac and iOS port. But we know of at least two different ports. Uh, this li little uh, Raspberry Pi and this, uh, I don't know, PlayStation, let's say. And uh, where is Service Worker there? Uh, I don't know. So I asked the people. Uh, and apparently, it's pretty good in GTK already, maybe WP. Uh, and I'm sure the guys here are completely crazy about fixing the last remaining bug before shipping it. <laughs> yep, that's great. Um, this, this guy there, these are the requirements. So you need WebKit to support, so you're not far. You need network cache support. If you do not have the network cache support, then you will not have cache API. If you have it, you have cache API. Uh, that's it. Uh, you, enable, you need to enable this service worker compile flag which, if you're using GCC, well, currently there are some issues, but still it's fine. And you have some runtime flags that uh, are on by default, but still you might need to, you might want to manage them to see whether you actually want to enable them or not. Um, so it, it's a decent amount of work because after that you need to iron out all details, uh, fix the WTF move, but actually not working in GCC and that kind of stuff. But Still, it seems manageable. So, JTK enabled uh, was skipping test yesterday, and now is enabling test. So today, so that's great. <laughs> yep. Um, and last, if you want to have like consistent tests, you, you need to update WebKit Test Runner so that it uh, sets the cache API quota as expected, and uh, you might need also some other stuff to, to make uh, the testing consistent. But yeah, it's pretty good. So we are back to that. 
so cool. Well, well, yeah. I was uh, I was posting them. Really, should have a backpack, and it's uh, it should be beefed up a little bit. Uh, we know that we have uh, missing pieces in the API we plan to support clients, window client. It may not be high priority, but still, it's missing. So we want to beef up the legs at least, so that we so that our moves can work uh, longer. A big backpack with background fetch, background sync, push. There, there are a lot of APIs that are um, related to Service Worker. So there, uh, it's a matter of um, gathering feedback, prioritizing things, because it's, uh, some features are more difficult than others. Uh, we need to see some adoption uh, to actually uh, start implementing these things. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's in the radar. Uh, these are things we, we might be working on. But still, we are not working on. Uh, we're back to that. Oh, that's cool. Uh, except we also want to uh, speed up things. So if you remember this thing, we were there doing a lot of ping-bonging. Um, so actually, when you load a page for the first time, uh, your UI process, you have a web process, and that's about it. But then you need to wake up a network process. Uh, that's the usual load, uh, load processes. So when, you, when we measure per, per, um, page load time, it's good. When service worker is unable, you actually, this web process needs, needs actually to talk to this storage process. So for the first page, you actually need to uh, kick the storage process. It's taking time. It's taking memory, it's de delaying a lot uh, the first stage. So that's, that's not great. And then you have all this thing from game which, which is adding a lot. And we know some services are saying like, hey, you're too slow to start with. So if this guy is there, maybe it's fine, but for the first page, it's, it's not great. So yesterday, not me, but uh, somebody uh, near San Francisco did that. Oh my god. Isn't it better? Yeah. No more storage process. Uh, it's gone. Uh, basically, it's called network process now. So we, we, decide, we decided to go there. Uh, and we, we, has, we have measured some uh, large improvements for the first stage of time. Um, so that's, that's good. Uh, still, it might, need not, it might not be good enough. Um, because you might need to spawn a service worker process. Okay, it's just one service worker process. Well, no. Because we are in a, the World Wide Web, and uh, it's the Wild West, it's very dangerous. Uh, a web process from uh, evil.com, or maybe it's evil.com there, should, should not be sharing the same service worker as nice.com because of the security uh, issues um, that were revealed uh, last year. So in fact, if you have different origins there, you should have different origins there. So if you have 100 websites with 100 service workers, you should have 100 web processes and 100 service worker processes, 200. And uh, if it's the first page, then you, we kill the storage process, but you still need to, kill, to kick in the service worker process. So we are back to previously the, uh, the previous, um, previous approach. So there we might we might want to go ahead there. Uh, we are thinking of things like, nothing is done, but maybe pre-warming processes, maybe actually having the service, service worker instances run in the, in the web process, because basically a service worker process is roughly a web process. Um, there are all sorts of things that could be done. Um, and there are all sorts of things that could also be done um, for Cache API as well. But there, what we really need is benchmarks. We really need benchmarks uh, so that we can measure the performances. And if we're improving it um, tomorrow, then it will not be degraded on Sunday night when I'm eating popcorn and actually hacking and regressing things. So there are some efforts in benchmarking for um, service worker or cache API. But it's, um, it's not yet there. And it would be great if uh, it would be shared, because uh, yeah, it's, a shared effort is always better. We have WPT. It's sharing testing. 
uh, sharing benchmarks will be great. Uh, I heard that IDB uh, started uh, benchmarking there and try, is trying to share things between browsers. So it would be great. It's great if, for instance, we know that Chrome is so much better on this test so that on the next day we can say, hey, we're better. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, since we do not have that, we, we cannot say that. Or well, we cannot say that either. So, um, so that, that, that's, that's one thing that we would like to, to get to, uh, being in touch with you. We also think that um, benchmarking might, be, um, might rely on APIs, like web driver APIs, that might be useful also for web developers. Web developers should also be able to benchmark uh, their things, like, oh, I'm using a service worker. Oh, it's regressing. Oh, it's progressing. Oh, I'm, let's try it with our, oh, it's, it's these things. Oh, let's try a cold start. No service worker loading the first page. Oh, it's hitting all these things. Ah, oh, it's, it's too slow. No, these kind of things. Uh, it would be very nice if we could um, go there. Uh, so yeah, a lot of work. Still, uh, it's Wednesday. So it's the last talk. So I will be back to that. <laughs> Thank you. Any question? Nope.